Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from sound for more It's Leo speaking. Today we're going to go through how we can use the Waves modules and also the um, Morph modules in ID700. If you haven't uh, subscribed, please I remind you to subscribe as it helps to grow the channel. So let's start. I'm inside the AUM. So if you follow the previous tutorials, you know that um, I like to add a bit of reverb for ID700, so let's configure it like so. So I just open it, so standard configuration. Let's use our um, algorithm number seven, our preset default, like so. So um, in previous tutorials, we have seen how um, different modules works based on the algorithms that you selected. We've seen envelopes, etc. If you look at the algorithm seven as it currently stands on the screen, you see oscillator number one, which goes into index three and index six, and then you see index three going into wave A, and then index six going into wave B. Both wave A go to morph and also wave B go to the morph module, which is here. Now let's open the morph module. So it works as any other modules in terms of envelopes and modulation rates, etc., etc., as we have previously seen. So you know how to operate that. But um, the purpose of the morph module is to morph from one wave, in this case A, to another wave B. Therefore, you have wave A and wave B, and the morph module can actually move between one to the other and move from one wave to the other. And you can create in the usual way an envelope, which is really nice. So let's uh, move these to wave A so that we can work on wave A in terms of settings. So let's click on wave A. Okay, let's bring up the controllers. Let's go up an octave like so. Perfect. Now, how does it work? Well, the purpose of uh, a wave module, both A and B work similar way, um, or same way, is to act as a, a transforming function. Here is where you need a little bit of knowledge of harmonic additive synthesis. Uh, it would be really good if you would have that knowledge. But as it stands now, you have selected here a type of sine wave that means that uh, there is no transformation applied to the uh, wave which is coming in into the wave A module. So classical uh, sine waves. You can see here on the right hand side harmonics. And in this case, you have harmonic one, which is active. You can go up in terms of plus and down in terms of minus in, or in terms of intensity. So plus one and minus one, okay. So you can reduce that and you see how that is transformed. In this case, I have reduced the level of intensity. If I double click towards the zero, set it to zero and you don't have any sounds. Now, if I set up a maximum again, harmonic number one is the default. I can then act on harmonic zero to move it up and down, which is really nice. Okay, so hopefully you should hear the difference. Now, you can use uh, the position here of uh, the harmonic in terms of intensity to create a transverse function, so a function which alter the, um, the original waveform, which is coming into the wave A, in this case, module. So let's try. So let's use harmonic number four. You can see how that is changing. Maybe harmonic eight, like so. And you can hear that the um, the character of the wave is changing. Okay, so let's add a bit to number 10. Now, if you see it going outside uh, um, this grid, you can use the normalized function here, which will try to normalize it. And it will adjust the intensity of all the harmonics to make sure that it is normalized. And this is very useful if you want to ensure that, um, yeah, your waveform uh, or your final waveform is normalized. So you can add any harmonics you like up to 32, right? So you can see. Really, really nice. Let's normalize it again. Okay, sure that it is normalized again. Okay, great. 
Now, in terms of um, looking at the left hand side here, you can emphasize it even harmonics like so, or other harmonics. Okay, you can hear the difference. And of course, you can tilt it like so. So this part of the screen is going down, this one is going up, or vice versa. And that creates different effects which you might find useful. Now, you can save this uh, to uh, a folder, which is really good. And you can also use copy and paste here functionality. And also, if you don't want to create your own, there are a number of folders here, which comes as default in ID700. So you can go in the blue folder and try some of the waveforms which are created uh, for you. Very nice. Now, let's go to Morph. Let's move these to B. So now you hear back sine wave because wave B as doesn't have a transfer function applied. So let's uh, go to the green folder and look for uh, something else. So let's go up, let's go up folder, clicking on that. Let's go to the red folder, try something in there. Okay, that sounds uh, cool. Perhaps let's go back to the algorithm and decrease a little bit the output because it's clipping. Okay, so now we have selected two um, wave um, transfer function for both wave A and wave B. So now you can finally act on the module, on the morph module, and you can say, okay, go from, uh, uh, as you know, you built the envelopes in from previous tutorials. So you can say, well, okay, let's um, uh, go cycle like this in half a second, move from uh, wave A to wave B, and then go back to wave A, and then go in a cycle. Why not? So let's try. <laughs> And you can hear now that we are moving from one waveform to another. Let's change it and try others. Let's create our own, why not? Mm, let's try something else. Let's try something perhaps from the yellow folder. You can see this one reminds of a square. You've seen when I clicked the normalize here, which went too low on, on the grid, so I clicked again normalize to reset it. Okay, so you get uh, uh, how it works. So it's nice to be able to change from one uh, wave to another using the morph module. And of course, now there is no limit to what you can do. You can say, well, let's go to the filter and do something similar. Um, why not? 
like so and this you've seen all of these in previous tutorial so hopefully you can follow up so you can have now modulation envelopes and filter as well on morph perhaps we can have it also on location if you have uh, headphones hopefully so you can hear the difference and let's make it slower with one second like so make it cycle and if you go back to uh, the algorithm of course you can intensify the differences between wave a and wave b using the indexes here right because we have seen previously that in this case index three going into wave a will act as an amplitude uh, a gate <laughs> Okay, you can hear the difference. Okay, let's go back to the algorithm again. So let's change that again, a little bit more dramatic. Perhaps uh, let's go back to wave B and find something different. Let me um, decelerate this. So we go back to two seconds there and uh, one second here. Let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so hopefully you get uh, how these um, uh, this works and uh, now really there is no limit to what you can do using ID700. One of the things that we have, uh, I haven't showed really in other tutorials is, or not yet through the tutorials, is using different algorithm, but that is something then of course um, uh, you can play a little bit. So, and uh, you know, you can find what uh, you prefer. Changing algorithm will change the configuration of the modules, which becomes um, really interesting. And another thing which I haven't mentioned is uh, a little bit more about indexes. We have seen uh, how indexes are being used for frequency modulation and also a little bit as an amplitude gate. But there are also um, algorithms where you can see an index which is used as a timber, which in this case is used to do a kind of amplitude um, uh, modulation. I say a kind of amplitude modulation, it's because uh, uh, there's some clipping applied, so it's not quite a true amplitude modulation. But in this case, you can use, like here, index two to create a bit uh, of amplitude, kind of am amplitude modulation. <laughs> So, I hope you enjoyed uh, the tutorials, the series of, of tutorials for ID700. It is a fantastic, uh, fantastic synth, and um, if you spend time you, in terms of sound design, you can create uh, very unique patches or presets, which then you can use in your own uh, composition. So, um, let me know if you have any other question, and um, see you next time. Bye!